Hello friends, welcome to my Pessimistic Guide to Anti-Aging Research, episode 18, which is dedicated to a search for our design flaws. Before we start, we have to concede that the way our or any other organism is built is not perfect. We are still a work in progress, a compromise if you will, and we have several design flaws that prevent us from living longer. Sometimes, when I'm driving by a community pool, I also think that humans, with few exceptions, are the ugliest animals in existence, but uh, this is a different story and completely beside the point. So, back to lifespan. First of all, let's remind ourselves that Homo sapiens is the ultimate focus of our gerontological efforts. With this in mind, I believe we are approaching the problem of extending human lifespan from a wrong angle. I believe that in addition to recognizing fundamental similarities in the aging process across all complex forms of life, which justify utilization of model animals, we need to focus on the obvious fundamental differences as well. From the moment of branching out, all species were dealing with the problem of aging in their own way for trial and error. It is therefore fair to conclude that within a set of basic mechanisms of aging, species developed diverse and unique anti-aging strategies. This brings us to conclusion that many working solutions to our specific aging problems are already available in other species, and that we need to look at all outliers and not only those who display outstanding relative or absolute longevity. The main feature of any basic mechanism of aging is that lifespans of all species are more or less determined by it. Emphasis on more or less. The promising part of this feature is that some species who violate the general trend in a manner consistent uh, with the move towards greater lifespan, of course, may be in uh, possession of silver bullet against the mechanism of aging in question, even if they are not particularly long-lived. Following the outline logic, Design flaws can be defined as the areas of imperfection which were ignored because other satisfactory solutions was, were found elsewhere. Therefore, it makes direct sense to analyze the outliers, determine if they are superior to us in the way a certain process is organized, and see whether we can apply their solutions to our organism at acceptable biological cost. I have to say that from the prospect of promising leads, mouse is in much better position than a human being. As majority of mammals boast much longer lifespans, mice have many superior templates to search for anti-aging interventions. If we were mice, I would feel much more optimistic about imminent and dramatic extension of our lifespan. For example, Mice are at the lower end of a regression showing a positive correlation between DNA repair activity and lifespan. This means that many mammalian species are superior to mice and that any one of them can serve as a template for modification of mouse DNA repair machinery with a significant chance for success. In contrast, Humus stands in proud isolation with no superior template to copy, at least in this collection of species. Mice and us typically occupy opposite ends of lifespan-related correlations, and this makes uh, the mouse a rather misleading model for our aging. Let's imagine that we achieve the significant extension of mouse lifespan by mirroring excellent efficiency of DNA repair of naked mole rat. The lifespan surplus can potentially be substantial. It does not mean, however, that we have the right to expect similar results in humans, because our DNA repair machinery works even better. Alternatively, and within established correlations, we can analyze other mammalian species and search for those who have a superior to our DNA repair and try to borrow their design solutions. In other words, we may be able to quickly increase our longevity by appropriating every advance in relation to us design from our mammalian peers. 
As you can see, this proposition contains nothing terribly new, except for the stronger emphasis on identification of superior template species for formulating anti-aging interventions directed at human beings. There are many examples of fruitless pursuits based on the concepts that could not be successfully applied to humans. In many cases, it happens because uh, humans are already leaders of the pack, and consequently, there is no clear biological path to any further improvement. In my opinion, instead of forcing the organism to accept rather crude interventions, we should seek working solutions that have already been tested. After all, the existence of living species who show that it is achievable in principle is the ultimate proof that the mechanism of aging in question can be optimized. Now, let's see if we can apply a proposed strategy and find some promising templates to follow. Here's an example of a study showing a strong positive correlation between efficiency of DNA double strand break to pair and mammalian lifespan. DSBs are a very common occurrence in DNA, and their efficient repair is critically important for genome integrity. As expected, humans are at the top of the pack, but there are few animals who manage DSBs even better, despite somewhat shorter lifespans. I did not find the identities of these animals in this paper, but I would be most interested to learn how they did it. Here's another example which is closer to my heart. Some time ago I showed that uh, the number of direct repeats in mitochondrial DNA inversely correlates with the lifespan. In this recent study, my findings were confirmed and also strong negative correlation was found for inverse repeats. In both cases, human mitochondrial DNA shows lower values, but there are several species whose mitochondrial DNAs have even lower frequency of these repeats. If I thought of trying to extend lifespan through modifying sequence of human mitochondrial DNA, I would definitely study several available templates before making any final decision. Finally, here is a study showing a positive correlation between abundance of sphingolipids and mammalian lifespan. Compared to phosphatidylcholines, Sphingolipids have high resistance to oxidation, which is thought to contribute to extended longevity. In the studied group, there are two outstanding outliers, camel and polar bear, who have dramatically high content of sphingolipids, and thus they may have a key to maintaining a favorable balance of lipids. Okay, I have no more wisdom to spill today, and by my parting message would be that there are many ways to reach desired destination, but I, personally, would prefer the quickest and the most reliable one. See you next time.